Hello everybody from beautiful Melbourne, Australia, the most livable city in the world. Well, at least it used to be. I think it's number two now. Anyway, I am spending this week with Welcome to Travel on their eight day tour. This is a group trip which is absolutely perfect. If you're new to Australia, you've just arrived in Melbourne on your working holiday visa, meet some friends, settle in. I'm really looking forward to spending the week with these guys and sharing with you what we get up to. And if you are thinking about doing this tour, then do make sure you stick around to the end because I have a cheeky discount code for you. So it's Monday, the very first day, and this morning we had a meet and greet. We we met everyone in our group who are totally awesome, as well as Daz and Klaus, and they basically just went through with us everything that's gonna be happening this week. Klaus is going to be our main tour guide, so she very kindly then took us on a walking tour of the city. She taught us some of the history, we visited the main landmarks, uh, we got lunch in centre place. Um, I got a pancake extravaganza from <laughs> the land of rainbows and unicorns. It's been an absolutely beautiful day, and to top it off, we have dinner right on the river in Hot Pubs. So the first stop of the day is the Queen Victoria Market, which is just around the corner from the hostel, and it's the largest undercover market in the whole of the Southern Hemisphere, which is quite a claim to fame. First, Cloud is taking us through the deli section. Um, they're all family run, like independently owned businesses. So if you are buying something from the market, you know you're supporting straight to the families themselves. You're not supporting like the big supermarket chains, um, which has definitely been a bit of an issue in terms of like our dairy farmers, for example. That's in the news at the moment that our dairy farmers aren't earning enough. What do you think of the crocodile meat? Oh my god, like I'm just mesmerized by it. <laughs> the venison, the Amy. This is a childhood dream, man. A childhood dream, you should try some. That is so awesome. Oh my gosh. I want to get one of these. This is my wonderlust one. These are apparently the best donuts in the whole of Melbourne. extravagant looking building and I believe we're about to start the food and drink tour on the Tuesday and we're starting with some chocolate. So go on, don't be shy, go on. Alright, so I'm tasting the chocolate. I mean, I, I guess this must be milk chocolate. Oh, oh, it tastes kind of orangey. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Oh, you didn't say that. Orange oh, wow. chocolate, these big chunks. Oh, I don't know. Like orange. I didn't say that. Ooh. Natural white chocolate. Natural white chocolate. Matcha. You oh. know, like matcha? Matcha. Mm. Matcha white chocolate. Have you tried the white one yet? Yeah, I absolutely get it. Is it disgusting? Oh no. <laughs> I'm about to have Go it. Go for it. It's not what you want, really, is it? You don't want matcha in your chocolate, do you? What is it? A meter kebab. A meter kebab of what? Are they dirty bastards? Then? Is that what it's called? Dirty bastards. Dirty bastards. No, dirty bastards. No, dirty bastards. Humbugs. I've become so numb. I can feel you there. Become so tired, so much more aware of becoming this. All I wanted to do is be more like me and be less like. I just can't rock up with my spray can and be a straight artist because I'm not artistic. 
but graffiti is what we would call like tagging and just it's more of a territorial thing it's sort of what we're all with I suppose um, but so you'll see the difference down here there is a major Melbourne artist called Lush Sucks he's on Instagram what did you say it's the most hashtag lane in Melbourne oh, hashtag spot of Melbourne yeah. the hashtag spot of Melbourne this is Hosey Elaine I was here three years ago and it was not half as busy as what it is now but it's the place to come where street artists basically just have free reign you are allowed to graffiti uh, to do street art on these uh, on these walls uh, which is super cool I wish they had things like this in more cities just so street artists have a chance to do their thing be free and without having to do it you know unlawfully Literally all around the corners, around every little, single little nook and cranny of this lane. Not a spot has not been painted. So it seems that not as many tourists know about ACDC Lane, but it's um, got so much street art dedicated to the music and it's super awesome and there's so much cool stuff down here and it's nice that there's no tourists here either. Beach, the water. Oh my goodness, it's so blue and beautiful. Um, everyone's playing games, doing handstands, trying to throw around an Australian football. Um, I didn't get the memo about this. Well, I probably did, I just wasn't listening. I'm never listening. And I'm wearing a skirt, so I don't think that anyone wants to see me do any handstands today. That's not gonna be pretty. Look at all these beautiful little beach huts that are just they extend down there as well. They're so cute. interesting characters on our trip. <laughs> Simon is brilliant. Oh, here he comes. Hey, Si. Where are you walking to, Simon? We seem to be walking down this uh, great hill. We just saw a possum being attacked by these vicious asshole birds. So yeah, it's been a rather eventful day so far and we're we're looking forward to seeing the penguinos on Phillip Island, so stay tuned everybody. Would you look at that? Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> This is absolutely stunning. What's the name of this winery? It's a gallant winery. So, first established in 1913 oh. with, with the uh, rich soils from the Mornington Peninsula land. That's all I know. <laughs> okay. I don't even know if that's true as well. Basically, we're just going to be doing some wine tasting. Um, apparently, I bought a Moscato here from the supermarket and didn't even realise it was from the winery that we're going to be going to. So, here we are. The first one's the Prosecco. <laughs> It's light. It's really, really light. It's not too light. Yeah. Crisp, fresh and zesty. Oh, yes. So this is the foundation Pinot Grigio. Um, we're going to try Pinot Green next. They're both made from the same grape, but Pinot Grigio is made in the Italian style. So the fruit is always earlier harvest. It's harvested up to four weeks earlier than the same grape used to make Pinot Gris. These are all quite light. They're dangerously easy to go down, dare I say. Oh, she's a cheeky. <laughs> so, she's a 
of the North Sea, Pinot Noir Juliet, which is the lightest of all the red. So uh, Sally was telling us that if you don't really like red wine but you want to start drinking it, um, then start with a Pinot Noir. <laughs> but it is light, which is right. You ain't wrong, Sally. the bridge to Little Island. There it is. Not Cape Wollamai? Beach Wollamai. What was it? Cape Wollamai Beach. Oh, Cape Wollamai Beach. Okay, I was right the first time. It's basically where all the really good surfers go to catch a wave um, because there's major riptides. Um, but it's not where we're going to be surfing because none of us are that good. Well, actually, at least we're not yet. Oh, look at the little guy! So sweet! There's a penguin in this hole. Yeah, penguin? Penguin. There's a penguin in there as well. Okay, we're just getting off the bus now because we are about to go see the penguins come out of the ocean because their eyes are so sensitive to the light. There's no photography or anything allowed, um, not even without flash, like just absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna be leaving my camera in the car. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go off to see some penguins and I'll show you as much as I can. We have finished with the penguins. They were so cute and little. Oh, I'm still very much, um, I need to undo myself. There is a gift shop here where you can buy all your penguin needs. This is where we're meeting up with the rest of the team. Um, it's actually freezing out there. If you do the penguins, make sure you layer up because it is so, so, so cold. Adorable. Amy, she got it on the wrong way. Yeah, oh, nice. good morning. Right. Um, we are still on Phillip Island and going for a surf lesson today. We're just getting suited and booted in our beautiful wetsuits. Looking good, looking good. Alicia, what are we going to see? See the pelicans. The pelicans. Mine, 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 mine. Oh, we see them. Oh my goodness. Look at them, they're huge. It's like they're all listening to her. Look at them all, so attentive. Oh my god, they're so close. Far out. Oh, here they go. Oh, oh. 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 Hello. Working. Surfing was so much fun. We had a lot of wipeouts, but also a lot of waves were ridden and caught, which was amazing. And now we have come to Maru Koala, an animal park, I think that's what it's called, to see some koalas and to feed some kangaroos and the wallabies and see some more Australian wildlife. Oh, it's a dingo. These are supposed to be really dangerous, I think. Thank God. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna peck your head. <laughs> I wish he did, that, that would be awesome. amazing. 
We're heading into the koala talk. Stop it. Oh my god, he's so cute. These ones are literally just chilling out. Oh. Hey. Hi. Koalas on the run. God, I've actually never seen a koala work before. They sleep for 18 to 20 hours a day. So there's only four hours in the day, four to six hours where they're actually awake. So this is really cool that we get to see him. Koalas feed only on eucalyptus. That's the only thing that they eat and no other species has that as food. Um, it's super important that we do as much as we can to be sustainable with deforestation and recycling. Koalas are currently a vulnerable species but if we don't do more um, to help the koalas, then they will become endangered, and we don't want that. This enclosure's got all kinds of different animals. Let's go inside and take a look. Thank you. They're so gentle, so easy to feed. Like it's everybody cool. just forgot about the albino. Yeah, it's just. But I think kangaroos really can sometimes look quite aggressive, can't they? Yeah. They can. Just when you see them on like the streets and stuff, you're like, ah. They're more like the red kangaroos in the outback, you know, the ones with the biceps. Yeah, or is yeah it... the ones with the biceps. Yeah, with the actual the muscles. The ones you see like memes of. Yeah, so. but these are the most common ones. They're Can nice. you actually pet them as well? Yeah. What have you got, mate? He's got a joey in his pouch. That's so cool. Then it was time to head back into the city. Dozen Clouds took us down to St Kilda to do a spot of paddleboarding and explore. But the last few days of the tour are really focused on your future time in Australia. So for the past two days, so this being um, the end of the tour week, we sort of start to prompt people to think about what their plans are next. So whether it be travel, looking for accommodation in Melbourne, hooking up with like their friends that might be further up north or getting some other qualifications and skills um, while they're in Australia. So it's literally anything that they need help with. So some people think, oh, you know, obviously I'm going to travel through Australia and they're going to help me with a great itinerary and, you know, inform me of what the major destinations are in Australia. But you could also need help with your resume. Um, you might be 18 years old, you've never applied for a job before and you need us to have a look at your resume and edit it for you and say, you know, um, like how to structure it and how to even apply for a job and what to expect in an interview. So it's literally anything that you need help with next. What we do is Friday, we dedicate most of the morning to a massive presentation. So we have everyone all together, gives them an opportunity to ask some questions if they need, but we've got a really great presentation that ranges from employment, um, qualifications that you might need, the different working fields in Melbourne and Australia overall, farm work because I know that is a big grey area for a lot of travellers that come over on the work and travel visa is how do I get rural work and farm work so we give like a step to step guide of how to do that. We provide them with a list of amazing contacts as well that we've spent a lot of time getting and then we the second half will be the really exciting like travel presentation so the major highlights like the east coast, central Australia, the west coast, mini road trips even like around Melbourne while you're here and then also like how to do it on a budget and like the logical way to do it and the best seasons and then yeah going into more details about like the major highlights that people might have heard from from their friends or recommendations but they actually don't know what it involves or what's there as a traveler so yeah that's a big big sort of Friday first half of the morning thing. And then the whole Saturday, um, after they've started to gauge a bit of an idea of what they might want to do next and spoken to their new friends that they've met on the week, though you find often that a lot of them like want to do a road trip together straight away, even though they've only known each other for about four or five days. We set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with myself, Adam and Daz, um, and we give them all the time that they need to sit down with them and go through everything. So just, it 
like they have so many questions. Yeah, from like resumes, right, I've got a contact from this farmer here, um, they've given me this information, uh, is it good? Do you think, do you have any more information about it? Or I've found this share house in Melbourne, this is the price, this is the location, what do you think? And then, um, but we can also sit down and map out the rest of your travel plans, like Australia-wide, and put it in a really detailed itinerary so that we can give you like a, um, an accurate budget to aim for, rather than saying, oh, it's gonna cost $4,000 Australian, and it's actually, you know, two and a half, or like if you wanna do travel for the next six months nonstop as a backpacker, we're not gonna give you a number that's not accurate. So um, yeah, it's a really, really big day of just like sitting down with you one-on-one -on -one and helping you. This is the part of the trip that from everyone who I've spoken to has found the absolute most valuable. There is no other trip or tour in Melbourne or even in Australia that can give you the same bespoke invaluable travel advice that Welcome to Travel can. So thank you guys for having me. I have had the absolute best time. We've had such a good little group and we're all part of this WhatsApp group now. So I can keep up to date with what everyone's doing and it all looks so good. A bunch of our group have gone already on a road trip down um, the Great Ocean Road, which is insane. None of us knew each other before the beginning of this trip. So it's so cool that you can just make these friends straight away from the get go. I'm so jealous of their trip. It looks so good. And I cannot recommend Welcome to Travel enough, especially if you've just arrived in Melbourne on your working holiday visa. I will have their website linked down below and you can get $50 off the eight day tour if you use my discount code BB50. So make a note of that and don't forget to use it when you're making your booking. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Welcome to our dorm room. Handstand time! Hey! Right, how you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.